invite you to join me in the invocation. Dear Lord, the month of May is a time of prayer for those that protect us. We pray and celebrate the veterans that have given their lives in order that we may live in a country of free speech and a life of our choosing. We pray and celebrate the law enforcement and fire personnel that protect our community. Most importantly, we celebrate the Lord, our great protector, with a day of prayer for our nation, both here and nationally. Let us come together before God to show our unity in our country in a time of need for spiritual guidance shown to us by our Creator. There is no greater act than to come to the Lord in prayer. Amen. 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 I have a special presentation. And do I see Lewis? You see his mother. <laughs> oh, Pat's going to do it. Pat Bramley, come forward. This is a presentation to those who provided information used in the Mayors of Albemarle pamphlet. Pat, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. I wish Lewis were here, but he is in Kennesaw, Georgia. Um, Lewis lives in Kennesaw with his wife and two sons. He's always been interested in history. When we moved to Albemarle, he was in the eighth grade, and he immediately became interested in the history of Albemarle and Stanley County. Currently, Lewis is a long-distance volunteer for the Stanley County Historical Society. In addition to presenting programs each year, he also maintains the historicstanley.org website. He volunteers for the Stanley County History Center by preparing almost daily posts on the History Center's Facebook page related to the history of Albemarle and other places in Stanley County. You may have read some of his Throwback Thursday articles and others that he submits to the Stanley News and Press. Lewis has compiled a number of books about people and places in our area, the latest being a booklet with pictures of Albemarle mayors. A number of people helped him obtain the pictures, and as a thank you to them, I would like to recognize them and present them with a copy of the booklet, Mayors of Albemarle. And if it's okay, I'd like to call out the mayor's name and the person here representing them and have them come forward. Okay. Could you come and hand out the booklets? You notice how quickly our is passed. <laughs> <laughs> And she calls your name. Stay up at the front so we'd like to get a picture of all of you at the end. W.T. Huckabee, Martha Louder. Yay. A.A. <coughs> Fur, Todd Fur, and we'll get one to read. How sweet. D.A. Moose, Beth Swanner. White Stokes, I don't believe Doug is here, but I'll get one to him. James B. Garrison, Banks Garrison, and we'll get one to Jane Lisk. Wade H. McSwain, Sr. <laughs> Wade McSwain. That's right. Carlton Benny Holt, I don't believe Bernie's here. Roger F. Snyder. Margaret Snyder. <laughs> Albert L. Whitley, Jr. Whit Whitley. And Ronnie Michael. <laughs> you would, everybody move over here toward the middle so we can get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get one to Rock? Sweet. The ladies in the front. No. 
much. Y'all can stay if you like. <laughs> Pat, if you would, Pat, if you would pass our thanks to Lewis for all he did to oh, get this together. Absolutely. And thank you to you. That's absolutely. exactly right. And to each of the folks representing all those mayors. That yes. was very nice. Thank you for everyone that showed up. <laughs> but everybody leaves. Item number three, consider approval of the April 16th regular session, April 16th closed session, April 19th adjourned session, and April 19th closed session minutes. Second. Approval. Motion by Council Member Hughes, second by Council Member Hall. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Agenda adjustments, I need to one, add one item at the end is to discuss a meeting time with Chambers Engineering. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Hall, second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Under announced delegation, Ms. Salem Taylor requests a text amendment concerning an Airbnb. There she is. <coughs> Good evening, council members, Mayor Michaels. My name is Salem Taylor, and I'm here with my husband, Thomas Taylor. And I'm here because we are interested in purchasing a house in downtown Albemarle to renovate and use as a short-term rental with private bedrooms and a shared common space. This is a popular concept in other cities as an updated version of a bed and breakfast that appeals to business travelers and tourists. The marketing and booking would be done through Airbnb and through direct booking. There are currently no Airbnb properties or lodging options in Albemarle other than the five chain hotels that we have here. And just want to clarify, this is not a boarding house, which is typically for people who can't afford to rent a traditional single occupant primary residence. So our room rates would be competitive with area four plus star hotels and rented to tourists, students, and business professionals for short-term stays. And we think that adding a lodging option in downtown Albemarle will be beneficial to our restaurants and downtown businesses, as well to Pfeiffer University campus, as visitors and family members would have somewhere to stay. Our downtown is evolving and growing, with Pfeiffer University bringing an influx of young adults. And I think that our downtown businesses need to evolve to meet that cultural shift and provide modern services like Airbnb. So I'm here tonight to request an amendment to the existing usage code to allow this type of business. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Nasser Rahim today with City Planning and Zoning, and he explained that the closest existing usage text is for a traditional bed and breakfast. And the way that he explained it to me, the current bed and breakfast definition requires that the owner live on site. And my husband and I live in Albemarle City Limits, actually on Anderson Road, not very far away. And we've got two kids and we'll remain in our current house for our primary residence. But we intend to be accessible and responsive to anything that is needs attention at the house 24 hours a day. And also the bed and breakfast definition may restrict tenancy to no more than seven days. And in the event that we have a student or a professional that needs more than seven days, we would like the flexibility to accommodate them um, within a reasonable time frame that can still be considered short term. It's not going to be anybody's primary residence. Nobody's going to get mail there. Okay. So I've done some research and I found that Charlotte has created a usage code for properties like this and they title it a commercial rooming house. And I've submitted it last week to the city office. So hopefully you guys got a copy of that to look at. Um, I've got a copy with me if needed. Um, the commercial rooming house usage definition works well for this business plan because it doesn't restrict tenancy to seven days and it doesn't require the owner to live on site but rather to be accessible and responsive and it's still permissible in the areas that are zoned OR as it's a blend of residential and commercial use. So what we're requesting is that City Council consider adapting the commercial rooming house usage definition for this type of business which would allow us to create a new, unique lodging experience that appeals to modern travelers and tourists. Airbnb accommodations are steadily increasing in popularity and profitability, and we would like to be the first to bring it to Albemarle. 
Our intention is to create an upscale property that highlights local craftsmanship, attractions, and hospitality, and provides a taste of Albemarle. So I'll be glad to provide answers to any questions you may have, and I appreciate your time. I have a couple questions of you before we proceed. <coughs> Number one, I'm assuming her request tonight is just to give information to the council because it has not been to the planning board yet. Am I correct? That's correct. We have no kind of ordinance or anything like that at this okay. point. In fact, um, staff has some major concerns about this as well. There's many issues with definition uh, at this point. Um, I mean, we're looking at a lot of different things that are really possibly being a long or a longer term stay kind of not really apartment, but long-term stay kind of place, being a, not what we have is tr traditional B&B &B right now, which has somebody living on site providing meals and such. Um, so it's really kind of a mix of different things. Um, I, I'm sure Ms. Taylor's project is, is, is gonna be really good, and I think it sounds really great, but I have concerns about when we define this stuff that you think about real carefully what could happen and what you could be opening the door for have you reached out to any other communities yet yourself? No, but I'm, I'm familiar with what's going on, and we are definitely not in Asheville or anything like that, but there are a lot of other cities in the state and across the country <coughs> right now that are having major issues with B&Bs. Um, most of them, including Asheville, have defined their B&Bs pretty closely to what we've defined ours. They, they have traditional B&Bs, and they allow Airbnbs done by a uh, owner or an occupant, a tenant or something like that, who wants to sublease a room for up to a certain number of nights. Uh, in Asheville, that's how they do it. They do not allow off-site um, owners to rent out properties for short-term stays. Um, they're trying to ban that right there. Um, actually, what they I don't know that we would see it as much, but they've seen a lot of displacement of long-term residents and such uh, when they've had apartments turned into um, housing for that. So we don't have quite the housing <laughs> issues they have there, of course, but um, you can see how they're are several other issues that could arise. We really want to take a, a close look at that before drafting any kind of ordinance for it. Kevin. Council, I think we're very early in the process. If you'd ask Mr. Robinson or Mr. Taylor questions, but do not get real specific because I think it needs to go to the, to planning, the planning board, board before board. anything like this comes to us for approval. I, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm renting a, 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 Airbnb in, in, in Waynesville for the Methodist Conference. I had never heard of them before <laughs> the Turns out I did a lot of research on it. <clears throat> there are a lot of Airbnbs in Stanley County. There may not be any in Albemarle, but if you if you search them out, I think there's even a tree house there is, yeah. oh, in Stanley yes. County yeah, I think that's being rented through this. And I think I saw the numbers. There are more Airbnb rooms than all the major hotels combined throughout the world. It, it is oh, an yeah, incredible yeah, total, thing. Possibly, yeah. So so I I I encourage. <clears throat> yeah our Finally. planning department to follow up on this and go through the whatever motions we have to because I, I see nothing but, but good stuff in it. I've used them in traveling and sure. it's been a great it's been a great service I understand the concerns too but I'm like Chris it's I've traveled all over the country and used them and it's been a good it's been a good fit. Are you, Kevin you're familiar with VRBO? Yes. Okay. I've used that all over the place, and that's basically the same thing, isn't it? Right. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I mean, it, so, to a certain extent, yeah. It's it's you know still supposed to conform to um, existing uh, zoning laws and such in the city, and that's a large yes. issue with the BR with the with the uh, Airbnb is that it it kind of skirts around a lot of the the local regulations. And, and, and the the Airbnb, you got to remember, two guys went to Vegas or something to a convention and put out air mattresses sure. and, and rented space to sleep and that's where the airbnb came in that got its name mm -hmm. but yeah. it's not really that way now so right. your honor if, if i'm correct what we need to do based on miss taylor's uh, suggestions and her request is to <coughs> give it to kevin let it let him do some in-house work yeah. take it before the planning and planning and zoning board and bring it back before and then come back to us. so i do you want that no, i don't want a motion okay no. okay <laughs> If council has no concerns, we'll let staff proceed with it. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Thank you very great. much. Great yeah. idea. Great, great. Uh, number Thank five, you. Mr. Adam Johnson, unique auto source to cons pres present concerns over bee droppings on his car inventory. Mr. Johnson? Hearing none, we'll move on. Your Honor, 
Yes. Um, I have had the opportunity to talk to Ron and Keith Burris regarding this, and I'm surprised they're not either one here either. It seems to be a – does everyone know where, where – is it permissible to – Yeah, sure. The, does everyone know where we're talking about? There's a big bee house uh, down on uh, West Main. Really? And the owner of the house is here. Yeah, the beekeeper's here. The beekeeper oh, is here. Oh, okay. Mr. Beekeeper himself. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's uh, basically, Mr. Dry, it's, it's, it's actually nature. Yeah. And I, I think it's ironic that if you read your newsletter from the League of Municipalities just Friday, they're supporting cities become what's known as a B city. The closest one to us is uh, the town of David. And, and it is basically supporting the B population because we've had so many problems mm -hmm. with those uh, dying off. Mm -hmm. What was they I, wanting I us to do? I, I, I do not know because I was <coughs> going to be curious to see what his suggestion was tonight because I do not know how you do something uh, when it's, uh, it's nature. just nature. Yeah, that's a, that's that's why I, I bring it up. I, when I spoke with them, they asked to come down and talk with us. And I, I don't know that there's anything that we can do to interfere with Mother Nature. Uh, I, have no way, foremost, I have no way we can uh, do you, it. You know, you don't mess with Mother Nature. Uh, she will get you. Then we'll be getting in the bird <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say yeah. we move, move on. on. And there is no unannounced delegations. Your municipal calendar is in your agenda. Anyone have any questions? There is a change the um, May 29th is no longer the COG meeting, the county COG meeting. It has been changed. Is that formally confirmed? And they were discussing they have not, it. They have not confirmed it. They so said they would. It is discussed uh -uh. about being moved, but it has not firmly been. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another change. Okay. The RPO meeting, uh, the TAC meeting, has been changed to June 14th. It's all okay. It was May the something. Stay on that calendar. Mm, or we, yeah. What are we doing then about that, Michael? Who's going to make that call? Is that the county manager's office? Is that the town of New London? Uh, you know, there was a bit of a change in responsibility and how the Stanley County COG meetings worked and were called a few years ago. So, as I understand it, uh, I, I talked to Susan Allman with the town of New London. <clears throat> they had initially wanted to move the meeting um, prior to my contact because they felt like the day after Memorial Day wasn't a, a good meeting to have everyone in attendance. The county didn't want to do it, so it was on. I uh, contacted Susan to reach back out to the county, and it's my understanding from talking with Susan that the change is going to be made, but those notices and all the confirmation of the arrangements, uh, no matter who's hosting, they first are co coordinating between the hosting town and the county, but then the county sends out all the arrangement details and the confirmations. So that is what I have not received or anybody else has received just yet. That's, we're talking three weeks away. Right. So I'll, we'll know I'll, at the next meeting, or maybe one of, one of our meetings. Next I'll, week. I'll go ahead and uh, double check. Uh, thank follow you. back up tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on our calendar? Hearing none, we'll move on. Number seven, unfinished business. Consider the proposed timeline for repairs to 608 Summit Avenue. Is anyone for Bobby Rory here? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, has. Has, has Kevin heard anything from him? Uh, I received this. They were told, they were told about the meeting, and I received this uh, information, which you should have in your packet. This is the proposal. Right. And I asked Kevin some questions, and I don't think it's fair to answer any of them without the gentleman here. That's yeah. fair enough. Okay. Well, what, what, what would council have us do with this? We'll move it to the next meeting. If, uh, <clears throat> if you hear from him, if you do not hear from him, we'll proceed. Council, what you want to do? Does we he, do not hear further. You proceed with your exactly. ordinance yeah. to the next meeting. Yeah, that's Does put he, it on the next meeting one way or the other. All right. And he he knows that it's going to be before us. Yeah, they were told that it was coming up okay. this week. Yeah, so uh, reach back out yeah. to him and let him know if he's not here. We're going to proceed with the ordinance at the next meeting. Okay. And I would ask that you do that, having it served. I mean, return a service. I mean, send it to him. Sure. Return yeah, service. we can do that. That's okay. fine. Thanks. I just. But I it needs to go to Mr. Do. Rory, not to his representative. Right. Thank you. Also, the question I left you today, you need to check that. If you haven't heard it on your voicemail, I'll check it. Check that. And make sure that's com in compliance. Also. New business number eight: Consider request of level three communications for encroachment on Hillco Street. Council 
Council have any questions? Mm -mm. I think okay. it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. So let's have a Move problem. Second. Motion by Council Member Dry, second by Council Member Hall. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, consider agreement to allow property owner access to undeveloped city right of way off of Greenwood Park Circle. Anyone here keeps speak for that? <laughs> okay. Council have any questions? Or if not, he'll come forward. I don't have any problem with that. No. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion Sorry. by Council Member Hall, second by Council Member Townsend. Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 10, consider allowing a groundwater monitoring well on Garfield Avenue. Council Member, Member, we have one of these already. They need to install another one. Motion approved. Well, Second. Motion by Council Member Whitley, second by Council Member Hall. Mr. Dry, you have a question. What's the purpose of this one? One's up the street, the other one's going to, what, what are they going to? I think Diener is making them put in more to test the okay. test, test. So it's the, just not that's the correct. Stick one in. It's it's being okay. Yeah. Just it's all from the sure. contamination at Seba. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Have a motion to second. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Number eleven. Consider request of Homes for Hope for a placement of a storage trailer. Move to approve. Second. second. Motion by Council Member Aldridge. Second by Council Member Townsend. Anyone care to speak for or against? I'm glad we have that problem. Yeah. But I, mean, I sure. think it's great that, we, that the need is so great that we need to do that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 12, consider bids for surplus scrap metals for the Public Utilities Department. You have the bids in your packet, Council. Move approval. Is that for both or just butches for the uh, the the bids, uh, and then falls for the uh, bids received are three vendors uh butchers recycling is the highest bid for brass and copper metals at 184 per pound and 243 per pound respectively Foles incorporated submitted the highest bid of uh, 0 0.0775 per pound for scrap iron for scrap iron excuse me is that what your motion is yeah and your motion is to approve those bids second second, second. motion is by council member bram second is by council member dry further discussion all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number 13, presentation of the proposed fiscal year 1819 City of Albemarle budget. Is this one yours or this, mine? That's not a budget. No, that's not. <laughs> this will be uh, presented by our city manager, Michael Ferris. But is that one yours? That capital. Oh, that's capital. Is that one yours? Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Go to the bottom line here. Go to the bottom line. Council, as Mr. Ferris is making comments, I'll remind you that this is the presentation tonight, <coughs> and then we will set a public hearing. And he will make our budget work sessions next week and go over all the details of this budget. Okay. Uh, Mayor and City Council, as the mayor said, just want to uh, present you with the proposed fiscal year 1819 budget and make a few comments. We'll have uh, budget work sessions next week. And at that time, we'll get into more detail about the specifics, but uh, would like to mention a few things tonight before we do that. Um, first of all, we recap the current fiscal year. Uh, we'll be fulfilling our financial obligations at the end of the fiscal year. We should end with adequate balances, and in some cases, increasing balances in each fund. Uh, last year, at this time, I sat here and described fiscal year 16-17, as I was recapping that, as the busiest and most aggressive with the projects and initiatives in the time I've worked with the city, and fiscal year 17-18 has continued that trend. There are many accomplishments in the current fiscal year I think we should be proud of, and I think it's worth <coughs> noting. Uh, first, we've received a strong financial audit report. Um, we also prepared for the first time and submitted our first ever certified financial report. Uh, this is bo both of these uh, accomplishments are excellent reflections regarding city staff and professionalism and competence in managing the city's overall financial operations. 
uh, in parks and recreation. We've completed significant improvements at Moorhead Park, including the opening of a new dog park. We've installed uh, the floor and made many other improvements at the E. Waddell Community Center, and we outfitted Central Auditorium to return it to a functioning auditorium for use by the public. In utilities, we've seen the electric pole inspection program and replacement program continue. We've maintained our RP3 diamond level award for reliability. We've completed an overhaul or in the process of completing an overhaul of the uh, Carolina Avenue um, control house, uh, which is Carolina Avenue is one of our three electric delivery points on our system. We have completed the overhaul and rehab of the treatment processes and the building at the U.S. Highway 52 plant. And uh, we are also in this current fiscal year working toward a cost of service and rate study for water and sewer. In the landfill, of course, we have two major projects that are ongoing. We've got the construction of the force main sewer line and the construction of employee uh, office facility. Uh, in general, we anticipate the removal of more dilapidated structures in this fiscal year than at any other time due to excellent interdepartmental cooperation. We've seen progress on the streetscape project. We've made the move to self-insurance in the current <laughs> fiscal year for health insurance. We are in the middle of a space needs and design phase for the headquarters police station project. We've implemented this current fiscal year the new residential solid waste collection contract at a reduced price for the existing services, as well as adding the, or the addition of a residential curbside recycling <coughs> service. We've continued with our street maintenance program designed to maximize the use of tax dollars, the best use of tax dollars, and extend the life of our streets. In the economic development arena, uh, we continue to see uh, that endeavor show its worth. We've had strong growth in the retail sector in Albemarle that is known to be critical for not only Albemarle but all of Stanley County and all of its municipalities. We've partnered with the North Carolina Department of Transportation for needed improvements on Leonard Avenue, which are needed as a result of the strong retail growth and development. Uh, we had the quality and closures announcement that all started through a routine contact by our economic development director to an existing business. We've seen uh, uh, we are in the preliminary design phase for the 282-acre Albemarle Business Center and have been awarded $750,000 for the construction of a road in the business center. So those are just some of the highlights of the current fiscal year. Uh, the proposed budget, I'd like to take a few minutes to describe what's in there. Uh, each year has its specific challenges, but as I was putting together this budget, what really struck me as we were trying to make everything work throughout all the funds are the limited resource options available to <coughs> cities. Uh, someone who's worked in this business full time for 25 years, I can think of a lot of other things that would be very valuable and useful and be a more equitable distribution for a way to fund what we do. But in North Carolina, they're just the fact of the matter is there are very limited options available to us. But nonetheless, we're still able to present a balanced budget that allows us to meet our financial obligations and continue to serve our citizens the best we can. So let me just take a minute to go over the highlights of each fund. In the general fund, the budget does propose a tax rate of $0.64 cents per $100 of assessed valuation, which is a $0.05 cent increase over current tax rate. This is in order to pursue two major city council priorities of economic development and public safety, specifically the Albemarle Business Center and the Police Headquarters Building. Uh, just to put things in perspective, I'd like to note each year of where tax money does go. Uh, the police and fire departments utilize over 100% of all property taxes collected by the city each year. To put that into perspective, <clears throat> if the city were to fund the police and fire operations alone with just property taxes, it would take an additional 25 cent tax increase to fully fund these departments. So it's no reflection on the service they provide with police. We have great and tremendous police and fire operations, but it just puts things in perspective. Uh, the budget in the general fund does not contain any change to motor registration fees or solid waste disposal or recycling fees. The budget does have uh, many highlights, and I want to just mention a few. We'll have the first time payment of $507,000 in the budget for the Almar Business Center and the Police Headquarters Building. We'll, the budget also has an increase of $54,000 for street maintenance and repair. The budget contains a grant match for the Albemarle Business Center Road of $250,000. We will continue our partnership with Retail Strategies to prevent leakage and loss of local revenue dollars to other communities. 
Uh, there is a provision in the budget to address a minimum commercial maintenance code should council choose to go that route. Uh, we will continue with the in-house electronic recycling collection that we started this year, as well as branding and streetscape implementation. We'll continue to remove uh, dilapidated residential structures at a higher rate. Um, we will move forward with various improvements in parks and recreation facilities and also continue with the bolstering of the city's information technology infrastructure. In the POW bill, the budget does uh, mostly include street maintenance and repair. Uh, that's the nature and the purpose of the POW bill in North Carolina. There's also the uh, acquisition of a crew cab with a lift gate, which is the first daily use vehicle purchase in the street division, or would be the first daily use vehicle purchase in the street division for many years. In the water and sewer fund, the budget does not propose any water and sewer rate increase nor any increase in water and sewer tap fees. Um, as I like to point out each year, um, that according to the UNC Environmental Finance Center, the city of Albemarle has rates in the lowest 10 percentile of all statewide systems, as well in comparison to systems of comparable size across the state. Major initiatives in the water and sewer fund include making first time principal, principal interest payments for the U.S. Highway 52 plant rehab project. We'll continue our in-house inflow and infiltration work. We'll fund the pre-design work for the relocation of water lines that are going to be affected by the relocation or by the widening of the 2427 project between here and the river. Uh, we have routine equipment replacement and we'll see some meter testing equipment replaced in the systems division and some lab laboratory equipment replaced at the plants. In the electric division, proposed budget the proposed budget contains a 4% electric rate decrease. This marks the second time in the last four years with a rate decrease and four consecutive, re four consecutive years with no electric rate increase whatsoever. Initiatives in the electric fund will include an electric cost of rate study. Um, in talking with electric cities, they don't recall one ever being done for the city. I've worked here 20, in my 23rd year. I don't recall one either, so we believe it's time to do that. We'll be continuing the bolstering of our electric system materials and supplies to address both planned and unforeseen needs. Uh, we'll have the rehabilitation of the Lee Lynn electric substation control house. We'll continue with the pull inspection and replacement program and also uh, move forward with our right of way maintenance, all designed to increase system reliability. <coughs> In the landfill fund, there's no proposed increase in the municipal solid waste or construction demolition fees with the current fee of $40 per ton staying in place. Also no change in the $1 per ton fee for the closure and post-closure costs. Uh, significant initiatives in that fund include payments for both the employment facility and the force main, uh, sewer force main line. Uh, we also plan to replace and upsize lines from the landfill sill cell to the leachate pond to allow for gravity flow of leachate and eliminate pumps, thereby reducing opportunity for problems and saving on electric costs. Finally, there is provisions for uh, an articulating dump truck to haul daily cover for the landfill cell. Overall, uh, the budget does include 2.5% for compensation issues. This is the same as in prior years. Uh, my goal is to provide a 1.8% cost of living increase in, for all employees to allow employee salaries to keep pace with the cost of living as well as keep our recent pay study figures competitive. There was also a 0.7 that comprises the two, comprised the two and a half overall, 0.7% in the budget to focus on a variety of compensation issues such as to provide merit increases for top performers, which has not been available in our budget for over a decade, and to address a variety of compensation issues such as compression, market competitive, competitiveness, and other issues. Uh, with health insurance, this will be our second year of a self-insured program and second year of no budgeted increase in health insurance premiums. Uh, even though we're not increasing health insurance premiums or budgeting any additional, we will still be budgeting for slightly above expected health insurance costs. Overall, the budget reflects a 1.9% decrease from current fiscal year adjusted budget authority. There are no new positions in the budget, no appropriation of fund balance to maintain operations. Um, I think it's important in thinking about the overall budget and impact on our citizens, it's important to note 
that the benefit of the 4% electric rate reduction for the average residential customer is greater than the amount of the proposed property tax increase on the average residential home. So Do that one more time. I think that needs to be repeated. <laughs> The 4% electric rate reduction for the average residential electric customer is greater than the amount of the proposed property tax increase on the average valued residential home. Um, overall, copies have been made to, available to the local media tonight. Copies will also be made available tomorrow at the City Hall and at the Admiral Branch of Stanley County Library as well as on our website. Um, in, in wrapping things up, just want to thank the Mayor and City Council for all your planning and priority sessions and hard work throughout the year. Thank the Mayor and City Council for the opportunity and faith trusted in me to develop uh, the budget and take on this very significant responsibility. <clears throat> I will say our work with First Tryon has been tremendous and has allowed the city to develop a roadmap to move forward with the projects discussed over many years. I think it's a very wise move on the city's council's part. And frankly, I don't know how we'd move forward and be able to have a map, roadmap moving forward to address everything that we're tackling at this point. At the staff level, I want to thank Finance Director Colleen Conroy, Assistant City Manager Christina Alfin, and Assistant Finance Director Matt Smith. Um, it was very reassuring working with them as I'm doing my part to have them look at the budget and look at all the things that uh, everybody comes from, comes from a different perspective on things, so there are many issues and items that I may not notice, and I, but it's reassuring to know that they are putting their heart and souls into it as well and have their eyes on the budget and trying to do the best for the public as well. And in general, I'd like to thank all the city employees for what they do year round. Uh, the budget's no good unless we see results and see a product of what we're, we're planning. Uh, finally, just want to remind everybody that we'll have budget work sessions next Friday at 530. Next, I'm sorry, Friday. I said Friday. Next week at 530, <laughs> both Tuesday the 15th and Wednesday the 16th. And I will ask the council please set a public hearing for Monday the 21st to consider the budget. Council, I'll entertain a motion. So Second. moved. Motion by council member Dry, second by council member Hall that we set a budget public hearing on the May the 21st, our next meeting at 7 p.m. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 14, Roosevelt Ingram Site Development. Mr. Donham, do you want to come forward and explain that, please? <coughs> Mayor, City Council, uh, Mr. Ferris, um, about three and a half years ago, we decided we wanted to do market. I, there had been some, I guess, pre mar previous marketing of the site, uh, but about three and a half years ago, we decided to market the, the Roosevelt Ingram site. Uh, and so we uh, worked with retail strategies, uh, put together. Uh, Mark Hughes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. Worked with retail strategies um, and put together some marketing material, and we uh, did direct mail out to developers in the Charlotte region to see what kind of feedback we would get, and really didn't get a lot. Uh, retail strategies. In addition to that, as they would travel to shows and, and talk about the, the city of Albemarle. Uh, they would also talk about this site uh, and, you know, uh, propose it to developers to see if there were any opportunities for any development. And we really didn't get any uh, strong interest at that time. Um, so uh, as part of this process of uh, trying to sell it, we uh, contacted the uh, North Carolina Air National Guard uh, to see if they would assist us with um, uh, uh, grading the site. And they agreed to do that. It, initially, we were looking at a, a smaller area. We weren't quite sure about how much we wanted to grade. Of course, it, a lot of it depends on how much they can do in their practice exercise in the process. Um, also, um, we had a developer look at the site just to kind of give us some ideas about how that might be better developed. And the, the um, information that came back was that the, the optimal way to sell the site would be if it would be at grade to the highway. Of course, that's going to be a that's a major project as opposed to doing some uh, grading. Um, so um, we um, also one of the things that happened was that the because of budgetary factors, uh, the budget of the Air National Guard was cut for some periods of time, and uh, so they weren't able to really make any commitments. So that delayed us, you know, some some months um, in that process. 
Uh, and also because of the uh, idea of the more grading, uh, initially we, we felt like, in, in talking to people at the state regulatory agencies, we felt like we could do the erosion control plans kind of in-house because it was a smaller area. Uh, as the area for the development grew, uh, and I talked again to the uh, authorities as far as uh, regulation on that, uh, they indicated that we would need a, a um, you know, full plan uh, to accomplish that. And so in that process, uh, I talked with uh, Chambers Engineering and got some estimates as to what it would cost to, um, to, um, to design and implement the erosion control measures. Uh, and the, the result of that was it's going to cost about $80,000 to do that, about $19,000 just to do the design work, uh, to put that into place, and then uh, $61,000 uh, $61, to actually put the controls in place, actually install those. Uh, I also, we estimated what it would have cost or what it would cost if we did the whole thing ourselves as far as the grading, uh, and you know implementation, it would cost about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars to grade that site by ourselves. Uh, so in looking at it, you know from that perspective, we, we would save quite a bit of money by using the Air National Guard and then using these um, uh, erosion control putting those erosion control measures in. And also the Air National Guard will be helping with uh, installing those uh, erosion control measures. Um, the what we'll have to do with this is we would have to have a budget amendment to fund it. Uh, and um, what we'd ask is that uh, this, if the city council wants to move forward with this, with this at our next meeting, we would have a bud budget amendment in place to handle it. And, if, and of course, with the sale of the property, the money would be, ref we would be put back into the budget that we used on the, um, you know, to, for our preparation for the 80000 that we would be spending. You're setting up a project budget is what you're doing? You would be setting right. up a project budget? Uh, Since we're coming to the end of a year, you'd have to have a well, multi-year project yeah, budget. We'll do, I was going to, yeah, we'll meet with And would we, after we get the design, evaluate with our staff what we can do in-house and what we would need the guards help with? and. Yeah, we, uh, the guard is pretty much going to help us with the, uh, and that's our charge for what the guard's doing. So they'll be doing, and they're used to doing this kind of stuff. So they they install the the uh, those types of measures, erosion control measures. Also, they'll be doing all the grading too, uh, which again, that's they'll have they'll bring in their own equipment. There'll be no cost to us for for them doing that. Uh, yeah, wherever we can use our uh, own uh, forces to do something, we will. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're we're working to keep the cost down. And, and when I was putting this budget together, working with Chambers, I was the Chambers Engineering. I was looking for every opportunity to utilize like the, the uh, Air National Guard and our forces in the process. Council, if you remember, some of you will not. When we built the soccer fields <laughs> at the community college, the Air National Guard did that for us too. Now, it'll take some time, and it may take them more than one training session mm -hmm. to do this. But if they're committed to the, to do this for us, I think we would be foolish not to let them come in and start grading that hill down. The only way we're ever going to sell that property and get a decent <coughs> value of it is to bring it down. I don't think we'll ever get to road level, no. but we can at least get down and, much, and match the adjacent property maybe. Give them some good rock training. It's good, good timing for that too. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Council, I'll entertain a motion to bring back a budget amendment if you so desire. And it will be out of the current budget, is that right? Well, it would be a multiple year. Of it'd, be a, it'd be coming out of fund balance and put into a project budget. That's right. I might make that motion. Motion by Councilmember Bramlett. Second. Second by Councilmember Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Number 15, you have an adoption for a resolution 1805. Involves First Citizens Bank. They need this formally adopted. Move approval with the correction. There is a um, there is an error in paragraph one. It's just a dated error. I did you that. see that? I did. So I'll move approval with that correction of the okay. 2020 2018. Yeah. So motion by Councilmember Hall, second by Councilmember Whitley. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Number 16. Consider approval for special events permit and street closures for the Alma Police Department. Chief, you're going to start at 5 p.m. Because that's one of our budget days. We'll be going in session at 5.30. Okay. Council have any questions? 
We have approval. Motion by Councilmember Hall. Second. Second by Councilmember Aldridge for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. A reminder of the very next thing is the law enforcement memorial service will be held on Tuesday, March the 15th at 5 p.m. at Courthouse Square Park. Next is consider set, setting a date for the Central Auditorium ribbon cutting and open house. Uh, there are several errors in this information tonight. Uh, all of them are not Wednesdays. That's right. Uh, <coughs> I'm available on, I'm on Wednesday, May the 30th. Uh, I think <clears throat> May the 10th is totally out. That's this week. May the 30th, I can do uh, Wednesday the 27th, or I can do either one of the September dates. Council, what's your schedules look like? Let's do May 30th. Baby. We need to do that thing soon. Can I ask Lisa what's scheduled so far? Lisa, do you have what you're planning on doing? No, not necessarily for that event, but what's already been, I mean, when has it already been used? It's been, been booked. Yeah, it's been. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Didn't mean to, don't mean to throw you under the bus, but I'm sure you got it right on the top of your head. I do. Um, I've spoken with the uh, dance company. They were going to run it towards the end of May and June for... Um, their dance recital but I think it was too close for them so um, they said they were going to get me the date for their next year um, the talent company is going to use it in October for their um, fall production and then um, with that I've also um, told the talent company that we would um, allow them to have their summer camps there this summer I saw that yeah. I think we need to, as we get to this May 30th, if that's what counts aside, we've got to get it advertised. A lot of people don't know it's even available yet. That, so. that, that would be good advertisement yeah. to have. The only two dates I count on are June 20th and 27th. Absolutely. I can make the rest I of it. I think I heard May 30th. Everybody got a conflict with May 30th? I do, Where's, but it's okay. I do. Christina, Christina, I can, Christina can you have the digital that I requested ready by then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think I heard from Mr. Bramman a motion to do this on Wednesday, May the 30th at 5.30, correct, Mr. Bramman? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Uh, a few minutes ago, we made an agenda adjustment. Chambers Engineering is ready to present the design of the corporate park business center to us. Um, I think it would, if council can make it work, it would be great to have this before our budget work sessions next week. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, all of us may not be able to get there. First date I'm gonna throw out is, is this coming Wednesday night at seven o'clock? I know if we, don't, if we can't all make it, and the other date I'll throw out is next Monday at 7 o'clock. I, I just think we need to have it before we go into our budget work sessions or in somewhere close. I'd rather do it Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could do it Monday. I can't Community do it. Community College has got an honors program uh, at 6 o'clock on correct. the 9th. That's the early college graduation. On Monday? Uh, yeah, on the 14th? Yes. But I, that's fine. Y'all go ahead and meet. No, no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> What about Wednesday night? You said you. you yeah, that's when you, the community that's college has got an honor okay. program at six. Sixteenth. Yeah. Depends. The ninth. This this week. This Wednesday. You can't do it this and week. And you got a cog meeting to, you're going to for me. I'll do it. Okay. And I'm out of state. Dexter, what time's your early college? Um, six o'clock on Monday. The fourteenth. Yeah. Council, how late would you want to start? He he says it'd take about an hour. Y'all proceed. Trust me. You're the only one that can't make it on. Yeah. I'll say proceed. Let's say we just keep it six o'clock, five, whatever time's fine. Monday at six or seven. Well, if we want Jason to be, what time is this? Hey, he's got something at six. If we got to seven, maybe he'll get here for part of it. Don't change it for me, cause I, no, I would rather y'all keep it scheduled. It's my daughter's graduation. Yeah, he's yeah. probably got something planned. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. you don't you don't want to rush six, into that. Let's do six. Yeah. Six. Let's do six on the 14th. Six on the 14th, okay. That's what we'll adjourn to shortly. <coughs> Coming around the table, Mr. Ferris. 
I don't have anything to add. Mr. Townsend. No comments. Ms. Hughes. Vote tomorrow, <laughs> please. Mr. Aldridge. No, sir. No, sir. Oh. Um, add a boy to Ross and his folks and the, the new paving. I went up and um, just to look around and went around two or three different streets. It was amazing, 3 o'clock on Wednesday, the depth that they had torn the road up. Did not get to go back Thursday, but folks who live around there, you would think they were really going to fuss. But the two residents with whom I spoke were very, very happy and very, very complimentary that things had gone as quickly and as they had gone. So um, I really want to get up there and see the finished product up there. Ross, you want to make a paving comment? Should be finished tomorrow. Okay. So you'll finish the paving tomorrow, and then all you need to do is dress the shoulders, correct? Okay. Well, it was funny, boy. When I, I was up coming up one of the side roads, those folks jumped quickly to make sure I wasn't trying to get through. And I said, no, 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 I promise <laughs> I'm not. Mm -hmm. I will remind folks that the Beach Blast is this weekend. It is imperative that we are there. Um, to keep or to to reignite that as a um, program for the city. Um, thanks to ADDC and to Lisa for you all for what you've done to get that started. Um, about three weeks, two weeks ago, I cut out an article from the um, Charlotte Observer about a North Carolina town's new law finds people who give money to panhandlers. And it's going on down in Fayetteville. I've cut it out, and I was just going to bring it and hand it to the mayor, I mean, and to the chief, the old chief. But last night, I had someone contact me who said, can we as a city not do something about this? And chief, I gave them, quote, unquote, what the chief of police would say. As long as they're not standing in the middle of the road and impeding traffic, as long as they're not saying, give me money, as long as they're not in the way, we can't do anything. Is that correct? Well, I still with I still think that we as a city have got to move forward with them. Um, I look at my beekeepers over to my left on West Main, and the man walks from close to where you all live on West Main. He'll be there for a while, or the woman, or they'll go to the other side of town, or they'll go to Walmart. Um, we got to do something. It is hurting, hurting our image as a city with those particular pieces of paper held out asking for money or saying I'm homeless. Again, we've got the folks in this county, we've got the nonprofits to take care of people if they will, um, they, if they want the assistance. So we got to do something about that, and I will continue to beat that to death until we do something about it. I don't, uh, and you bring up an interesting point. I do not know how we do it, because I'm for I for one, I know I'm not going to be willing to charge someone that comes up and gives you a dollar. I mean, I, that's just a citizen being kind and considerate. I, I know that's what that law apparently does, so I, that would be hard to do. I don't know how we can address the other side. Chief Owen, that might be what you need to reach out to Senator McGinnis to talk about and see if they can change that statute some uh, so maybe we can change the panhandling law a little bit. I guess I, I brought the article because somebody is doing something about it. And, I, you know, listen, it is charging somebody $25 for giving them a dollar. <clears throat> but the issue is, is that the folks are out there asking or the folks are out there with their signs. So um, you all may not be seeing them. You all may not be getting phone calls. But I am, and I'm getting texts and emails all the time from folks saying what can we do about it so um and at this thing that's it mr dry no sir mr whitley just go vote if you haven't <laughs> mr bramlett go vote anyone in the audience have anything to come before council hearing none i'll consider that we adjourn until monday may the 14th at 6 p.m for a session with Chambers Engineering on the Business Center. So moved. Motion by Council Member Dry. Second. Second by Council Member Hall. And I will say, if something turns out that they cannot do this, we will just put out a notice to cancel it and we'll just move on to our next Tuesday meeting. At and we'll reschedule at some other point. 
but we will try our best to do that one. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Yes.